Oh, well, that's a bummer. I guess our kitchen chest has certainly seen better days. It's going to need a little TLC. Stick around and find out how we managed to go from this to this. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Welcome back, and as you saw, our old kitchen chest is in need of some work. And we figured now is the perfect time to spruce it up. And looking at examples of surviving medieval chests, it's clear that they would have decorated them in some form or fashion. So I figured I would make an attempt at it myself. So the first step, of course, was to rebuild the chest. And to do a proper job of it, I had to use wood glue and nails. I made sure to set the nails in so they wouldn't show when I painted it. Things got a little messy with the glue, obviously. Now I added some strips to the bottom of the chest just to lift it up off the ground for those days when it was nice and moist out, period. Again, I set the nails up inside and then sanded everything nicely. Because I planned to paint the chest, I filled in all the seams with a good wood filler. I had a good reminder here on belt sander use while sanding the exterior of the chest. I do tend to learn from my lessons. Now it's important to sand down all the seams to get a nice surface and smooth surface to prep for paint and primer. Now that everything is properly sanded down, I gave it several nice even coats of a good primer so that the base coat would adhere well to the surface. So here it is, all primed and ready for me to start masking in some special details that I'm going to be adding during the painting process. Before masking, I added some masking lines where I wanted the details to go with a nice light pencil stroke. Even though the chest has flat sides as you can see, I wanted to give it more depth to look like it was made up of several smaller panels, just like those medieval chests I previously showed you. Once all the masking lines had been drawn out, I began masking for the windows using a template I had previously made to make sure that I got enough tape laid down. I'll use this template to cut the tape to the correct shape. 
Now with all the masking complete, I began applying the first coat of a gloss oil-based paint in a nice hunter green. The oil base will be very durable and will stand up to a lot of abuse. Now back then, they would have had oil-based paints made out of linseed oil, and they also had something called tempura, which was egg-based, and they had cassin, which was a milk-based paint. With the final coat dry on the corners of the chest and the lid, I began masking the front panels. The whole idea with painting it this way with the multiple panels is to try to build up the layers and give it a 3D effect when the light hits it just right. Now, if you notice my brush technique, I am attempting to brush away from the tape and not up to it. If I were to brush up to it, I could potentially force paint up underneath the masking tape. With the final layer of oil-based paint finally dry to the touch, I started doing the process of shading. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding a small amount of black latex paint to the edge of the masking tape, and then I'm slowly drawing it out into the panel. Now it's such a small amount of paint that this is almost like a dry brushing technique. This will add a little bit of depth and texture to the edge of the panel and make it look 3D. I finished the shading on the large front panels, but I still need to do shading on the upper and lower panels. So to do that, I need to remove the tape. Now, when I remove the tape, I peel it away from my painted edge. That way I get a nice, crisp, clean line. With all the shading on the front complete, I'm now going to remove the masking tape on the windows. Again, I'm going to be peeling away from my painted edge to get a nice clean line. I took a moment to test fit the lid to make sure that it was still fitting right and to see how it looked. I was pretty happy with the way it was coming out.
Once everything was nice and dry, I began laying out for the heraldry that I was going to paint in the windows that were around the box. Now that everything is laid out, I began by painting the fields. These are what the backgrounds are called in heraldry. They can be a single color or multicolor, and each color has a meaning. You may also notice that Lady Evelyn's field is diamond shaped, while mine is shield shaped. That's because she is a lady and I am a knight. While rare, if a lady was awarded her own heraldry, it would have a diamond field. Here I am cutting out the charge for Lady Evelyn's heraldry. In heraldry, a charge is a device or an emblem that occupies the field. In Lady Evelyn's case, her heraldry, the charge, is a badger. My charges are snow leopards. With the charges now outlined, I began painting their basic shapes. Once they're dry, I'll go in and add the details. Now in heraldry, the animal's body position is called an attitude, and each attitude has a particular meaning. There's certainly a lot more detail in my charges than there are in Lady Evelyn's. I decided to outline each heraldry with a nice silver.
Although you can't tell from this angle, I painted the field of the Brotherhood Heraldry with a very brilliant white in a gloss finish to make it stand out really well from the window that it's on. And here we have the finished product. I think it came out pretty okay, and patrons at events seem to like it. What do you think? Leave a comment below with your thoughts, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. Have a good day, folks, and see you next time.